Hey folks, I want to start today's discussion with a problem that we had on our AP Calculus review the other day. This was one of their homework problems. And they had to answer this question. You know, I'm not even going to read it to you, but <laughs> you can see there is no equation anywhere. No algebraic equation, I should say. I mean, there is an equation right here, but you don't see a function that's you know, listed out like 2x plus 5. It's just in function notation, and it shows us the graph. They have to make all conclusions from the graph. Now, <clears throat> why am I showing this to you? Well, today we're going to look at an uh, algebraic concept. We're going to solve them algebraically. Um, but I, I want to remind you that we just got done doing a homework assignment where you had to answer questions graphically. So I, I want you to understand that we have an absolute value function, okay? And I also have this going on in my head too. <clears throat> this is not an easy concept um, to, to get your mind completely around. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I'm not expecting you to answer an, a, a calculus question today. It's almost like taking a high school football player and putting him into a Seahawks football game, you know, an NFL game. They might get killed. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I'm just saying, you're not ready for AP calculus uh, questions, but but I, I wanted to show you that we're kind of prepping you for that development in your brain to understand graphs. And so uh, stick with me and just do the best you can. And, and if I if I lose you, ask me lots of questions. I know you can you can do this stuff that we're doing today, um, and and it's part of your developmental process, just getting smarter and smarter and smarter. So, you know, I, I respect you and I, I care about you and I, I want you to understand a little bit about like, where is this stuff coming from? So that's what an absolute value function looks like, right? See, you're going to have an absolute value function on one side of the equation, but it's been moved somewhere. It's maybe been transformed, like maybe it's been moved down uh, five spots. It's been moved a little bit to the left, let's say. And uh, there's some kind of compression and stretch, which we're not worried about worried about right now but it's equal to some line okay you know the, the the this function we want to know where this function equals this line over here well this line uh, you know i'm not going to get too much into it right now but let's say it looks like let's say it looks like i'm trying to just kind of estimate it let's say it looks like this okay well where is the line hitting the absolute value function where that's what we're asking where is the line hitting the absolute value function? So what could what could I do with that with that line up there? Now I'm not sure this is gonna let me do this, but could I could I have it like could it be like this? Could the line be like that? Sure. How many times is it hitting the black absolute value function? Two times, right? Could it look like the way I just had it drawn? Yeah. How many times is it hitting the absolute value function? Two times. Because the absolute value function keeps going and it hits up here. Now let me change it a little bit more, okay? How many times do you think it would be hitting the absolute value function maybe now, right? Now that it's steeper over here than it is over here, well, it's only hitting in one place. So this function, uh, this solution, this equation, I should say, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, this equation that we're looking at right down here, it might have one solution. It might be hitting right here. It might have two solutions. It might look like this. It might have no solution at all. Check this out. Let's say the line was like down here somewhere. Okay. And, and let me give it a little bit of slope. So uh, it doesn't hit the absolute value function at all. See, we're either going to have, like I just said, we're going to have no solution like it is right now. We're going to have two solutions like this, or we're going to have one solution that might look like, I'm going to try to get it lined up here. It might look like, like that. Okay. So that's where this idea of checking your solutions is really going to come into play. OK, so let's look at the th uh, four steps, excuse me, the four steps. And I'm going to walk you through it. Then you're going to put the video on pause and you're going to try the first. Uh, I think it's three problems. <laughs> I forgot. I think it's I think it's problems one through three uh, because the author really messes with people. And they start with the, the no solution. They start with the one solution. Let's start with the one that's most basic, the two solution situation. So if I came back here and I, and I fixed my drawing, I, 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 come on computer, I'm going to make it look like a two, two solution problem. Okay. So let's say it, it angled like this. I'm just going to make it hit the, 
hit the function in two places. You might be still going, what is he talking about hitting two places? It hits right here and it hits right here. So the two solutions we're looking for is this X value and this X value over here. Okay. That's the one that we're going to focus on first. And so we're going to follow these steps. If you haven't written the steps down, please do so right now. There's four steps to follow. I'm going to walk you through them right now. Um, so let's see, let's get going. The first one says isolate the absolute value function. Here is the absolute value function right here, 5x plus 1. Well, right now a minus 9 is standing in my way and a 2, a 2 times is standing in my way. So how do I undo subtraction? I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Okay, so this is my step 1 right here. Step one, I'm trying to isolate the absolute value function. So if I add nine to that side, I got to add nine to this side. That leaves me with 26 on the right side. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try two steps. Two steps is algebra all at one time here. Nah, I take it back. I'm not gonna do that because it's now we got to divide. So that, that just get messy. So let's just write down what we got. We got two times the absolute value of five X plus one. Okay, and that's equal to 26. Oh, wait, I forgot my 4x here. 4x plus 26. Now let's see, I've got a two times the absolute value function. How can I undo a two times? Well, I'm going to divide by two. All right, let me just zoom in on this even more. Okay, so how do I how do I get rid of this two times? Well, I'm going to divide by two, like I just said. And um, here we go. Divide it all by two. Divide this side by two, because I got whatever I do on this side, I got to do on the other side too of the equation, I get 5x plus 1. Uh, bingo. I've got my absolute value function all isolated over there. Now, when you're dividing by 2, you got to divide the 2 into the 4x, and you got to divide the 2 into the 26. So I ended up with 2x plus 13. In my head, I was doing that kind of ahead of me writing it down. 2 goes into there 2 times, 2 goes into 26, 13 times. Check mark. I'm done with step 1. I've isolated the absolute value function. Let me go back to step 1 right here isolate the absolute value expression okay all right next step step two is it says let's see here step two says write two cases down this is the weirdest part of all these problems let's just think about what the absolute value function does for us okay so i'm going to put it over here what's the basics what are the basics of the absolute value function right what does it do well let's say we had absolute value of five. Okay, that's just plain five. What is the absolute value of negative five? That's positive five. So how does it do that? How does it make negative five into positive five? Well, really what it's doing is it's taking the opposite of negative five. So here is my case one right here. Case, case one is if the number inside is positive, it just ends up being the same number. Case two is if the number inside is negative, it ends up being the opposite of the number inside. The opposite of a negative is a positive. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write our two cases down. Case one, if 5x plus 1 ends up being positive, the absolute values don't do anything to it. It just leaves it alone. 5x plus 1 equals 2x plus 13. Case two, here's case two. Case two is... If the 5x plus 1 is negative, it's going to take the opposite of the 5x plus 1. All right. And so now we've got 2x plus 13. Now, I got to show you something kind of weird. The book, you know, if you look in the book, um, it takes the negative and it multiplies it to the other side right away. Um, it, it writes it like this, 5x plus 1 equals the opposite of 2x plus 13. It doesn't really matter where you put the negative. You can put it here or you can put it on the other side. But you got to take the opposite of what we had to start with. So only do the opposite on one side, though. You can't do it on both sides because if I took the opposite, I don't even want to get into it. Just do the negative on one side. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to distribute the negative through. And I end up with negative 2x minus 13. And over here, I've got 5x plus 1. Now I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So plus 2x plus 2x. Oh, let me zoom in here. This is super small. Sorry. Let's zoom way the heck in here. And so I don't know why I started solving case 2. We've got to solve both of them. I started solving case 2 first, but I don't know. I got, I got excited about this one over here. And so what do we got? We got 7x right here. And why don't I just do 
why don't I do that? Subtract one from both sides too on this line. So now I've got seven X equals negative 14. I divide by seven on both sides. I get X equals negative two. Here's one of my solutions, negative two. Let's go back over to the other case. Here's case one over here. And I'm going to solve case one. Here we go. I'm going to subtract two X from both sides. And I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Boy, this seems a lot alike, doesn't it? That's weird. Oh, yeah, because look, we had to add 2x. Here we're subtracting 2x from both sides. So we get 3x. Oh, 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 we got no one. That's why I'm subtracting one from both sides. And then I got a 12 over here. Now I divide both sides by 3. I'm going over this super fast, I know. But I get x equals 4. Here are my two cases. All right, now here's step 3. Step three, we got to test them out. We got to test both of these out. So we're going to take four and we're going to plug it back into the original equation. So the original equation was two times the absolute value of five times whatever X is. Here it comes, four. I'm going to put four there. Plus one. Okay, absolute value. I may have lost it here. Let me, let me slow down for a second. I am going back to, try to get my highlighter on. I'm going to go back to this equation right here, the original equation. Before I do, before I did any kind of arithmetic to it, and I'm gonna see if it gives me a true like statement. Okay, so here we go. The other side of the equation is four times whatever x is. Okay, see it says four times whatever x is. So I put the four in for x, and then I'm gonna add 26 to that. So here we go. We're gonna do all our arithmetic. So 20. 21, right? 20 here and one there makes 21. Absolute value of 21 is still just 21, right? Two times 21 is 42. Okay, now let's do the other side. Four times four is 16. 16 plus 26 is 42. Check mark. This is one of our solutions. Definitely a solution. Definitely works. Definite, def, uh, definitely works. I hope I spelled that right. Um, and then... Uh, Definite, define, this bothered me. Definitely, yes, that's right. I think I got spelled right. Over here, I'm going to take my negative two and I'm going to plug it in my equation. So I get uh, two times, uh, oh, shoot, I don't want a parenthesis there. I want an absolute value, dang it. Two times the absolute value of five times negative two plus one, absolute value bar, equals four times negative two plus 26. All right, what do we get? Negative 10, right? Negative 10 plus one is... Uh, ooh, I better write some of this down. Two times the absolute value of negative 10. Negatives get a little tricky, don't they? Plus one. And then on the other side, I got four times negative two, which is negative eight. Negative eight plus 26. Okay, so negative eight plus 26 is 18. And over here, I got negative nine times two is... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, negative nine absolute value makes it positive nine. So I get two times nine. Two times... Oh, yeah, two times nine is 18. Check mark. This one definitely works also. Let me see if I can write definitely without any hesitation. Definitely works. Yes. We have two solutions. All right. And if it wants set builder notation, then you're going to do this. You're going to go abs uh, that curly bracket X. Oh, wait, is my variable X? Oh, yeah, it is. I think on this one on your homework problem, it's a W, the first homework problem. So make sure you, you pay attention to that. I don't care if you switch to an X on your paper. But uh, make sure that you put in the computer whatever variable they're using. X, X, uh, excuse me. X such that X is equal to 4 and, and X equals negative 2. So I'll help you uh, set up the first one, how you're putting in the answers uh, on, into the computer. But look, let me, let me zoom out here. You are going to go try number one, problem number one. And today in your homework, I need you to label it like problem one. We're trying to solve these algebraically. You know, you're going to put number one and you're going to label your, your, your steps. And I'm going to give you credit for writing this kind of stuff down in your uh, notebook. Okay. Thanks for watching my video. Sorry it got so long here, but I hope the, uh, the video made sense.